What's going on, guys? This is episode 1.75 of that Road to 315 Bench. This is the third day of the first week. This is my arms day, but you do see me starting off with some incline chest press. Uh, as you know, for the past week or whatever, I've been hitting a flat bench press. So, one, my goal is to get better at bench, which means I need to bench more. Specificity remains king. So I'm still trying to sneak in uh, bench volume on those two other quote-unquote chest days or pushing days while I'm working my shoulders and my triceps. I'm still getting in some heavy, some heavy pressing to directly work that chest, but I think this is a slight enough variation that it uh, kind of makes it a little easier on the body because it's inclined. And here you see me doing some bat ring rows because I'm going to do chest. Why not just superset that one set of chest with one set of back? It's already, you know, arms, so I'm working triceps and biceps. These bat ring rows work a bit of your biceps, but more back. But they still were a little useful to sneak in and then take more than a couple seconds. You actually see I'm a little tired from those chest press. So I took a quick second, quick couple breath break, and then hopped back in because I felt my back could do a little bit more. And I really felt it. It was really good for getting that last stretch. Then we have some good old easy bar curl superset with some overhead tricep extensions. Uh, I saw like a bent uh, curling competition a couple years ago with some guy leaning against a wall to do these curls. And I tried it and ever since then, I've just always found them a little more effective. They kind of help you just focus on that bicep. And depending on how you're doing your curls, yeah, you should probably keep your elbows still. But recently learned that uh, attending tendon of the bicep crosses over the shoulder joint so doing your curls you know a little bit above shoulder height right to that face could be a little useful for hitting that little bit of the bicep so i'm burning out on these bicep curls these are smaller exercises so i don't really mind doing the burnout sets smaller muscles smaller exercises smaller weights they don't take as much uh, stimulus as the you know a pec or a hamstring or the back to grow so do more burnout sets they don't take as long to recover on the flip side and you may see a little more growth so you see me get this weight overhead for my tricep extensions got to steady myself and really it's just the fact of keeping those elbows straight and then trying to go behind that head as far as you can Here you see me going back to those chest press again really useful to get that stimulus in and the thing, nice thing about the dumbbell press versus the bench press is yeah the weight might not be as heavy but you can get a really deep stretch you know if you turn those dumbbells you see how i'm doing it and kind of sink those arms that's lower than the bench press would come on your chest this deeper stretch may allow for a little more hypertrophy in the chest and it'll just help you develop a little more pressing power at the bottom so that's my goal with these and of course they hit the triceps so real deep stretch, nice pause, and then push up. After that was done, you know what I had to do. One more set of those bat wing rows. Uh, another utility of just, you know, using heavier weights, even if the intended muscle you're trying to grow, the secondary muscle is, say for like example, the biceps, because they're doing back. The loads you can lift with a back exercise that will tax the bicep are just generally going to be heavier than what you can lift with the bicep alone. So yeah, you may not be attacking the bicep directly, but you're still getting pretty good work because are you going to be able to curl 75? Are you going to be able to do a bicep exercise with 75 pounds efficiently? No, but you can do a back exercise, or maybe, maybe, depending on who you are, but you could do a back exercise with that much weight and still get that tri or bicep exercise stimulus secondary, and it can be very effective for growth. So I finished those heavy pressing. Now you see me going for another deep stretch, but this time on my tricep. Uh, questioning if these are redundant with the uh, overhead tricep extensions, but I do feel like there's a slight difference with like the skull crusher, because with the overhead tricep extensions, you're locked into a certain type of angle. With the skull crusher, you can go behind the head for a deeper you can come forward, bring those elbows forward a little bit more to those shoulders. And I feel like you feel that a little more. I think it's in the long head of that tricep on the bottom from like the elbow to like the armpit. And of course, I'm supersetting them once again. It's antagonistic, so I'm pumping blood into both sides. The incline curls. These are a great way to stretch that bicep right there at the bottom. That is a great stretch for the bicep. Then you contract it all the way up. Again, I am intentionally bringing them a little bit 
uh, past my shoulders to my face to try to hit that little bit of the bicep that crosses the shoulder joint. <laughs> if I do say so myself, I think I have pretty developed biceps. I think they they take over much of my arm, much more than my triceps. So it's a little backwards. But uh, so I, I really try to like, you know, I hate to say this, etch in the details. Really try to go the extra mile to push them because I did so many curls as a child or as a teenager or whatever that I just feel like just go a little harder now. Like uh, I already got like the predominant amount of bicep growth I'll go from doing regular curls. So just switch it up, emphasize the squeeze the tension, the mind-muscle connection, all that stuff. If I can hit it from, like, I would say an abnormal angle, I consider that a plus, right? Like, I'm not going for anything crazy, but the body is very adaptive. And it stands the reason that if you grow from putting the body up against resistance in one way, even if you take it outside of its normal range of motion in a safe way, you may get some benefit from just adding resistance in that abnormal way of motion. If nothing else, you get a little bit of tendon strength, a little bit more of tendon resilience that you didn't have because that's what the weight does. The weight makes these tendons, the bones, the muscles, it makes your system stronger. So I've been rambling for a while, but I'm finishing up with my EV bar curls and my EV bar overhead tricep extensions. Uh, sorry about the angle. I'll work on that. Uh, these are my last couple sets. Only did three or four. I find, found that I really didn't have to do that many, uh, probably because I'm still adapting. Uh, I haven't benched or even pressed or used my triceps and my shoulders this much in a week in a while. And so I didn't really require that much stimulus. Uh, I got a good enough pump after, I think it was only four or five exercises. I was just like, uh, screw it. Why waste more time than necessary? And I got on out of there. But first you see me doing some burnout sets. Uh, what is it? The burn in the muscle. I don't know if I said this before, but if you know, if you don't know, it's a good thing. That is the result of tearing in the muscle from what you're doing. It is the chemicals like lactic acid, but other growth stimulating metabolites in your bloodstream. So that burn is a good thing. If you get it, you chase it, you feel it, you hold on to it. There's research to show that that could be a little more beneficial for growth. Uh, finish those overhead tricep extensions. Here you see me doing some body weight curls. They're the body weight curls with a 40 pound in between my legs. Uh, these are really good for the biceps. Once again, they're a heavier compound exercise, but again, that's 240, 250 pounds of resistance on my biceps. Uh, where are you gonna get that much weight on your biceps and curl? Where are you gonna get that much stimulus at? So I did one weight with the 40. I know I'm getting a little tired, so I dropped to 40 pounds and just did a straight set. You can literally see my bicep flexing from this angle. Like, you can see it extending and shortening, extending and shortening. And that's what you want. You want to challenge the muscle in a variety of ways. You want to challenge it in a lengthened position, like the incline curl, and in a shortened position, like those body weight curls. So I did those, came over and did my body weight dips. Uh, these are a little peculiar. Uh, not for any other reason, just because sometimes I feel a little shoulder irritation, depending on how I'm doing them. But as long as I keep the shoulders in, I feel good. I have my 45, 40 pound dumbbell. I did a set and, you know, I'm finishing, getting closer to the end. So I dropped the weight into the quick little burnout set with that. Dropped the weight again by adding a little bit of support with this incline dip machine. I think I talked about this before, but I learned this trick from like RP, RP periodization. Uh, those assisted chin up and dip machines they're not just for people who are learning they can be useful for burnout sets they can be useful for warming up the muscles before you just throw that full load of whatever your body weight is you know <clears throat> you don't just hop on a bench press at 185 you usually warm up with the bar so it stands the reason that you wouldn't just do a chin up uh, cold or you wouldn't do a dip cold yes it's your body weight but you can still warm up and in this case push past the point of what you would normally be able to do with this additional help. So I just run the stack, really. I run the stack. I might change the angle of my pressing, but I'm trying to go down nice and deep. The key with dips or body that I had to learn for myself is there's a certain angle I feel that you can go about 90 degrees, maybe a little lower, and you can feel it. You can feel a press in the back of your arm. You go a little lower and you start to feel that deltoid and that pec muscle start to benefit. And that's where you got a question. Am I doing a dip to get better at the dip? 
Am I doing the dip to strengthen these muscles or am I doing the dip to work on the tricep? So if you saw me cutting it a little short, I was feeling it more in my tricep at that 90 degree angle. So I tried to cut myself off there. I think this is the final set of the weight. Again, this is like 20, 30 plus reps. It's, this is a very efficient way to pump a lot of blood in the muscle. And this is what stimulates it. You get a big pump. The muscle swells. Yeah, the inflammation looks nice a day or two. You know, you're feeling a little swole. But getting a lot of blood is very essential for growth, not just for inflammation. I have one, a couple more sets of these uh, incline curls and overhead tricep extensions. And you can even see, like, it, it's getting hard. I'm not even using that much weight. I'm using 30 pounds. 30 pounds, depending on your level, is not a hard curl. I, I would say people reach that within about a year or two of training, if not sooner. But, like, since I went so heavy with the compounds, the body weight curls, the bat wing rows, these biceps are already tired from all that weight. I don't have to go so heavy in order to get a stretch. So I emphasize the stretch. I emphasize the feeling, uh, the tension in the muscle, rather than just going for that direct heavy stimulus. Finish shows, back to banging out some overhead tricep extensions. Again, the angle is slightly different here. My elbows are a little pointed out. Just trying to emphasize that deep stretch of the tricep. When I'm working out, yeah, you got form, but depending on your goals, form and technique is an efficient way to do things. So let's not say anything else. Other, well, let's not compromise on that. But everybody's body is different. And you got to feel out the stimulus and feel what feels best for you. So if you feel that you can get a better stretch in that tricep, a little bit better than my muscle connection, then you chase it with, you know, with your elbows out. As long as you are doing it safe and you are playing in the confines of, you know, good technique, good form, I would say there's no injury risk. In fact, there's a little bit of a benefit for strengthening those tendons as long as you start light and build up. This is the final set of what I got for today, boys. It is some drag curls. You see here, the pump is looking very nice. These are really nice for hitting that, ah, what is it? That head of the bicep muscle. The one that C.T. Fletcher calls like Mount Bicepsuous. But just pulling back and squeezing, pulling those elbows behind you, really, really good. And keeping with the theme of today, right after those, I just finished up with some tricep extensions. <clears throat> Uh, some tricep press downs. Again, uh, I think it's very important to change the angle at which you do it. You saw me doing a lot of stuff overhead. So now I'm just working on pressing down one more time in addition to those dips. I'm even trying to get a nice pause at the bottom. Although the pause always feels much longer in my head than in all, back on video. So, so yeah, all in all, I would say uh, this workout went pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good with the workout at this point. Like a I, was, I can handle the volume pretty sufficiently. Uh, I'm recording this a couple of days after I did this workout. Not feeling that tired. Uh, I recovered enough to go up the next workout, next chest pressing workout, whatever you want to call it. So that is a good sign. If you can challenge the muscle, get a stimulus, work hard, and then still recover by next time, it stands to reason you are probably on a good path. And here's my last of the tricep extensions. Normally I press down. But sometimes I feel just pressing straight out in front of you, like directly out in front of you with those elbows up. You can feel those triceps in a really good stretch. You can almost see them right there. And then the Y is closing. So I am out of here. Thank you boys for watching.